Capernaum. These ruins are all that's left of this ancient village. Two thousand years ago, the village was one of the most important communities within the territory of Herod Antipas. Capernaum stood on the border of Herod Antipas's kingdom and that of his brother, Herod Philip, on the north shore of Lake Galilee. The village stood on the great Marmaris Highway, which extended from Syria in the north to Egypt in the south. Many travellers and merchants would travel up and down this highway with their rich supply of products. Along their journey, they'd stay at Capernaum's inns. Herod Antipas realised that these traders were a rich source of income for him. He established a royal official in the town, maintained a military presence, and also employed tax collectors or toll collectors. You might remember that Levi, also known as Matthew, was a toll collector here. Besides passing traders, there were two other rich sources of income for Capernaum. These were farming and fishing. The rich basalt soil from volcanic activity thousands of years before created a perfect base to produce a wide variety of agricultural products such as wheat, olives and grapes. However, farming wasn't exactly easy. The soil was good, but the basalt rock made the practice of farming enormously difficult. The rocky ground had to be cleared before farmers could work the land. So local farmers cleared the land and used the basalt rock to build their houses. What we can see today are the thick walls of these first century homes and these walls were built without mortar. Such thick walls meant homes were cool in summer and warm in winter. The other industry important to the village was fishing. Capernaum is situated near warm water springs. During the winter season, fish would migrate north to this water, which means that fishing was good all year round. This may have been one of the reasons why Simon Peter and his brother Andrew moved from Bethsaida and set up a house with Simon Peter's wife and mother-in-law. The centre of any ancient Jewish community was, of course, the synagogue. Today we can see that the 5th century synagogue is built on the foundations of the 1st century synagogue. The synagogue ruler during Jesus' ministry was probably a man named Jairus. It was his responsibility to organise speakers for the synagogue meetings. It's likely that he asked Jesus to speak here on at least one occasion. The Gospel writer Mark records the occasion. He states that people were amazed when they heard Jesus speak because he taught as one who had authority, unlike the religious teachers. However, as Jesus' popularity grew amongst the people, his invitations to speak in the various synagogues declined due to the objections of the religious teachers. This forced Jesus to preach out in the open. He drew his thoughts and ideas from his surroundings. Some of his parables included the wise builder who built his house on the rock, the sower who sows his seed in good soil, and the prodigal son who travels to another country, which could have been Herod Philip's territory, only a day's walk away. Not much is left of the village now, but the message about Jesus, contained in his life, his ministry, his teaching, live on in the Bible and within the hearts and minds of believers. <laughs>